Good morning and hello. Uh, welcome oh. to this week's edition of Art in Our Life. My name is Laura Lee Gulledge and today I am filming here at my house and I'm doing it solo today. Um, so I feel a little vulnerable that I don't have any helpers here on hand except Rory, but he's not too helpful. Um, and I'm just gonna check my video on Facebook to make sure that we are actually going. And then I'm gonna dive into talking about self-care. Okay, awesome, we are online. Cool, so this is, we are now starting the second half of my virtual book tour for The Dark Matter of Mona Starr. My new graphic novel, is that right side up? Yes, yes it is. Uh, thank you all for tuning in today. I'm going to be talking all about self-care today, which I've talked about in a bunch of the other videos I've been doing, but I really wanted to make sure I did a completely separate video all about self-care, so something that stands alone, so that's easy to share with other people, because also it's just really a hot topic right now, uh, is everybody is in need of extra self-care um, and a little bit of extra healing at this moment. So, uh, before I dive into it, I'm just gonna give you a little overview. I'm gonna explain a little bit about what self-care is and walk you through how to make your own self-care plan and then touch on how to actually implement it in your everyday life. Because I feel like we can talk about this stuff um, and it's all really theoretical, but I'm more concerned with how do I actually follow through and doing this every day rather than set really high expectations and then you don't meet them and then you beat yourself up a lot. Uh, so this is based on my practice that I've been working on for a bunch of years So I hope it's really helpful for you guys and I invite you to chime in if you have any questions about anything I'm talking about you're like, oh, what's that? Um, like I'm gonna be checking the questions on here uh, And also I'm gonna be asking for you guys to shout out things that help you guys in your self-care plans Because I feel like there's things that I haven't even really thought about including in mine and sometimes they're so obvious and sometimes there are things that are specific to your needs. Um, so I guess before I dive into it, I just want to mention real quick before I forget, because I have to plug myself, um, that I'm selling copies of The Dark Matter of Mona Star on my website, which is whoislauralee.com. So in case you guys want to pick up the book, in the back of the book, I feature my self-care plan and a blank one because I'm this obsessed with encouraging everybody to make one that I put it in the book. Um, so again, this is a story about a character dealing with depression and anxiety and figuring out how to overcome them using, you know, self-care, creative expression, art and love, reaching out to other people. Um, so yeah. So, oh yeah, it's a graphic novel in case you haven't heard me talk about this a bunch. So, shameless plug, over. Okay, now let's get into what is self-care. Okay. Well, my favorite quote about self-care, of course, is this Audre Lorde quote, which maybe you've already um, seen posted on the interwebs, because uh, I feel like it's a popular one. But caring for myself is not self-indulgence. It is self-preservation. And that is an act of political warfare, Audre Lorde. I also have a quote from her downstairs hanging in my studio. Because um, I feel like self-indulgence is the part that uh, sometimes people focus on that, yeah, self-care is all bubble baths and whatnot. Um, but really, to me, it's, it's about health care. And it is about building your own resilience so that you can deal with stress, so that you can deal with um, health issues when they come up, like if you get sick. Uh, but it's also about, it's an act of compassion because to take care of yourself, it's like, you know, they say putting your oxygen mask on first before you can help others. It might seem selfish to make taking care of yourself a priority, but it's actually not selfish because it means that you can help the people around you a lot better. Um, you know, I was just thinking like that saying, <laughs> putting your mask on, like now it's like, well, making your mask before you can help others. That's, so it's like a whole other connotation. So to me, it's about taking care, taking ownership and accountability and responsibility for the needs that you have as a human, whether the emotional, physical, mental, spiritual, whatever categories you have. 
because I feel like a lot of us know what we need and we don't always do, you don't know, we don't always follow through on doing what we know is best for us. And so self-care is making a plan, like an actual plan, really just forces you to put it in writing. Because I find when I put stuff in writing, I'm a lot more likely to actually follow through with it because part of me is holding myself accountable. So I started doing a self-care plan, uh, I don't know, I guess it was about four years ago. It was after I had um, emergency surgery, uh, which is actually a, a scene in Mona's story as well, where I got this mass in my intestines and they had to remove it. And they're like, we don't know what caused this mass to develop. And I thought, well, that's terrifying. Um, the fact that stress is actually having an impact on my body, that if you have a lot of stress and you just push it down, it might actually go somewhere in your body and collect. Um, so, um, so that's when I decided to actually start doing things to help. Um, see those stars in the corner? Are those my lights? Are those like, maybe it's like a, okay, whatever. Uh, <laughs> okay, so my first self-care plan was super short. So this is one, I'm gonna try to hold this up. Um, this is one I made, I guess, about four years ago. And it only has 20 items. It's super simple. So this is how I started. Um, I just picked the top things for my physical, mental, and emotional needs. So super simple, super easy. Um, but now it is, now it's like really big. <laughs> now I keep adding things to it. So now it looks more like this. So don't be intimidated or frightened or overwhelmed if you see this. You're like, this girl's bonkers. You're like, no, 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 start simple. You can even start with just like 10 things that help you and that's your self-care plan. This is sort of like 2.0 next level stuff. Um, but I'm gonna walk you guys through it. Um, I just wanted to make sure that I've mentioned that it doesn't have to start off so big. You can just start off with something that's really accessible and fits into your everyday life. And to me, it's just thinking about what makes me feel better, what helps me heal from stress. Um, and these are things that you probably already know in the back of your mind. In Mona's book, uh, she calls it her don't die plan. I call it my hero's training because I feel like, well, I'm on the hero's journey. I feel like a lot of us are on the hero's journey. Of course I do. Most of us are in the hero's journey uh, right now. And it's a path that challenges us in many ways which is why I feel like that self-care is actually sort of my hero's training. It's like that training montage you see in the movie where, you know, our hero is like, oh, I want to do important work. It's like, well, you got to do the training montage. And so that's what my self-care looks like to me. It's like me out hiking, me meditating, me doing physical therapy. That's my dun -dun 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 training montage. It doesn't seem very glamorous in the moment, but really it's making myself strong and resilient enough so I can actually do good big work. And because the goal of the hero's journey is the freedom to live. That's the end goal, the freedom to live. I repeat that. Uh, because it's about being alive and choosing to be alive and fully living your life instead of being sort of dead inside or going through the motions. So to me, um, yeah, weaving these things into everyday life is what helps make my life more restorative. Because really I want my entire life to be self-care. I want everything in my life to be something on my list because that means everything I'm doing is restorative and rejuvenating me because it's also sort of the fountain of youth, not to like put that out there, but yes, I just put that out there. Um, because if there's things in our life that are draining us, sure, you can't avoid all the things that are draining and that tap our energy, but adding things in there to counter that, to counteract those things um, intentionally, I think is really important and I know has made a really big difference in my life. And so you can actually access my copy of the self-care plan that's in the back of Mona on my website's learning page because I have a bunch of my handouts on there. Oh wait, my I hanging out? Okay, hold on this side, this is a little easier to see. Um, so I think Lorcan might be sharing that link because there is a copy of my self-care plan and then a blank one so that you can fill out your own. Um, but again, yours might look different than mine. I'll get more into detail about that. Um, before I walk through how to make your self-care plan, I just want to bring in sort of what I see is, um, I want to tie in a couple other words that 
you might not associate with self-care, and that is contem contemplative practice. So I've done some mindful art workshops with my art Juliet Trail, which has been awesome. I've learned a lot from her about contemplative practices and how it overlaps with self-care because, well, okay, what's contemplative practice? These are the things that, uh, the actions that cultivate self-awareness and mindful presence. So it's about being in the present. I also think of it as when you are sort of choosing how you're focusing your attention. Because I know sometimes I'm thinking about things, like why am I thinking about, you know, the worst case scenario of what's gonna happen in the future and obsessing over things I can't control. It's like, well, let's try to do things that help us stay here in this moment because this is the only thing we have control over. Um, so this is a wonderful handout. This is also, I don't have it on my website yet, but I'm gonna get it on there soon. But this is a beautiful illustration of contemplative practices. Some people might call it mindfulness, um, but they're everything from, uh, let's see, everything from, uh, you know, contemplative arts, journaling, music and singing, uh, things that are definitely on my self-care plan. But then there's other things that you might not consider as restorative like just storytelling, walking meditation, um, like vigils and marches, pilgrimages, uh, meditation, um, so, da, da, deep listening, social justice work. Um, so actually I feel like the, the, the contemplative practices, they really go hand in hand with what self-care is because self-care is about being present and about restorative um, actions that help connect you with who you are. Um, so I just wanted to make sure I mention that. And when I talk about presence, I always love to talk about and what mindfulness is. Here's a super simple diagram of what presence is because you want, our brains want to go to the future to make plans or they want to go back to the past when things were normal. Uh, and it's really hard to be in the present right now. So um, yeah, but that's our greatest challenge. And I feel like I'm not like present all the time. I mean, I'm definitely like binge watching some Picard right now and hanging out in outer space because I can't always be in the present all the time, but I'm trying not to, yeah, run away too much. <laughs> okay, so for making our self-care plan, uh, we're gonna make seven lists. So if you wanna grab a piece of paper and a pen, I invite, I artner dare you to join me in creating um, just, we're just going to make some lists and you might think of it as um, I don't know you could do them on post-it notes you could do them on one sheet of notebook paper maybe in my, your mind this is going to be more of like a Venn diagram so really it can take whatever shape you want because everyone's brains are different okay so number one we are going to talk about let's see my big hand out here I feel like it's too hard to read if I hold it up because my font is like teeny tiny so I rewrote it out bigger it's kind of messy but it's easier for me to read so number one identifying your physical needs dun, dun, dun. these are the things like I said it's it's messy <laughs> I'll read it <laughs> it was me this morning so the physical needs obviously these are the things our body needs to stay healthy this is what we need for um, to heal from stress these are the things I turn to when I feel tired or weak or sort of just like a, a desaturated version of myself. Because normally it's hard for me to actually pay attention to my body. A lot of times I'll notice the emotion first. Like, oh, I feel bleh. But they're like, actually, I think I'm really tired and hungry. Like, oh yeah, that. Because a lot of us who spend a lot of time up here in our head, we're not hanging out down here. We're like, so a lot of times I get confused in labeling how I'm feeling. So a lot of times I'll label an emotion, but not realize that it's actually a physical issue. So I invite you all just to pay attention to that if you also are creative or spend a lot of time up here or on here. Um, so my physical needs, let's see, and I don't always do all these, but it's the hopefully most of them. So I have daily, weekly, and regularly, just because that's how mine sort of developed. Uh, so daily, eight hours of sleep, uh, supplements and food medicine, which I'm going to get into in a second. Uh, no caffeine after 2 p.m. Cheese levels, because anyone who knows me knows I have to have cheese every day or it's not good. Um, natural beauty, 
This refers to that I make my own, uh, I used to wear a lot of makeup and now I actually make my, a lot of my cosmetics um, and have tried to, I don't know, embrace just spending less time doing my makeup and taking it off and sp taking that time for other self-care practices because it's more helpful. Um, affection, the average person needs eight hugs a day for maximum health and well-being, which is really hard right now. So whenever I do get to hug somebody, I like hold on for dear life. I'm like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, then desk breaks. If I'm sitting at my desk, especially working on a really involved project like art where it sort of sucks you in and then hours go by, I try to make myself get up like every hour and do a uh, little dancing, a little stretching, hug the cat. Uh, I don't really have space right here to demonstrate these two, uh, the breath of joy and parahara, which are two uh, sort of stretching practices, um, but maybe I'll do that later. Uh, see, weekly, I hike almost every day um, outside for a half hour. Um, so I hike, I don't know, probably like three hours or four hours a week. Then I do yoga an hour a week. I do like two 30 minute sessions um, at home and then I'll do physical therapy the same way. So for me, it's like Monday through Thursday. Normally it's like sort of, well, obviously now it's all home time. So I'm getting a lot more, but I'll sort of like alternate. Um, and the physical therapy I do are practices mostly for my wrists. Um, but I also weave those practices into my yoga stuff for like my hips and stuff to counteract what I'm doing. So if I'm spending all day at a desk doing this, especially if my legs are crossed, then a lot of the physical therapy and yoga I do is built to, yeah, counteract. Um, limiting adult, adult beverages to three times weekly. I must admit, I've been slacking on this one since I've been at home stressing out and freaking out and by myself. Um, so this one I really need to work on. Um, flossing every week, very important. Um, then once a week I'll do like a face scrub or mask, you know, the self-indulgent um, cause I feel like a little indulgence or maybe the word, not self-indulgent, but maybe the word like lavish is a better word for that. Something lavish, um, and luxurious to like treat myself. Um, and I definitely, I use a heating pad or ice pack a lot. Like if I'm sitting down to watch TV, I'll just sort of do a body scan. Like does anything in my body hurt right now? Does anything need attention? Um, and also I got a weighted blanket. I'm so in love with it. So if I'm really... If I'm like really down, I'll sort of go on the sofa with weighted blanket and like tea and like a heating, like, um, it's pretty funny. Like I'm like a little old lady, but the weighted blanket, oh, I have a 20 pounder. It's pretty intense. I feel like a 15 pounder would probably be fun for most people. Uh, and Sunday dance. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, I know Larkin likes some weighted blankets. Uh, and yeah, Sunday dance is another ritual that's helpful for keeping my body happy. Then regularly, of course, hot baths and like steam, uh, super into that. Uh, and I have like a whole bath time ritual. Um, then naps when needed. Naps are highly underrated. Uh, sun protection, which I've been forgetting about lately and getting sunburned. I'm like, Laura Lee, you're ginger. You're like, take care of yourself. Um, wearing a wrist brace when I do cleaning or housework or, any, or spin my flag. So protect the wrist. Uh, cause we all have sort of trouble spots. So just being, I don't know, just taking responsibility for them. Then, uh, switching when I wear a bag, switching on different shoulders or wear a fanny pack, um, to help with my shoulder tension and then seasonal healing. So giving myself permission, like every season to do something special. Uh, I was going to get a massage this month as my, as my seasonal healing, but alas, that's sort of off the books. Um, but things like sound baths or acupuncture, whatever works for you. But I, I find that doing something like every season is, is helpful um, if there's a budget or you can do trades or whatnot. Because I, I feel like a lot of these are not expensive. Um, so that one is sort of like the special indulgence or if someone or if it's like a birthday. Um, OK, so those are the physical needs. And I feel like those are sort of the uh, Laura, you say you have a 60, a 60 pound, 60 pound blanket. <laughs> uh, I feel like the physical needs are the most obvious. So uh, unless if anyone has any questions, please type in, but I'm going to move on to the emotional, emotional needs. 
because uh, I feel like these are a little bit more abstract, the emotional ones. So for me, let's see, I don't have them organized by daily, weekly, regularly, because these are just what I need all the time. Uh, so emotional needs, time in nature, nature's my number one medicine, time with animals, like this little cat over here, uh, time with kids, which I'm really missing right now. I've actually been putting songs with kids in them on my playlist because I miss kids. I miss doing school visits. Uh, time in water. This is swimming, bathing, all of it. Uh, growing plants, uh, talk therapy. Uh, I'm very thankful. I've been, I started talking with someone at the Women's Initiative right before pandemic, and then we had to stop sessions, but we're just starting back up virtually, and I'm really thankful because there's a lot of stuff. So if there's, um, so if you need to talk to somebody, I, like if you're in Charlottesville, I know Women's Initiative is like a good, um, like if you don't have money, <laughs> it's a good resource. Um, so I, and if you can't talk to like a therapist, therapist, talking to somebody is helpful because verbalizing what's going on, it just makes it, I find that I don't piece together what is going on inside my head until I have to verbalize it. And that's what helps me figure it out. Uh, dusting, oh, this is a new one. Uh, my friend Megan just showed me. It's uh, more. It's sort of like dust, like actually, like visualizing, like dusting off like bad energy and stale stuff, and like <sighs> shaking things off. Cause I don't know. I feel like I'm a big ritualistic person. Cause I think a lot of stuff that helps us is sort of we're tricking ourselves anyway. So that's one I've just started doing, and it's like new and so. Um, then volunteering, uh, actually something I would always do when I was younger, I was a huge volunteer um, for different projects because that's what helped sort of combat my sadness about the world. It's like, oh, I'm doing something. I could channel my emotion into action. Um, and sadly, I can't really do that right now. Um, but that's something that always helps me get out of my head if I'm sort of getting lost in myself too much. Um, sending snail mail. Actually, i am got a big batch of snail mail going on downstairs right now. Um, because I feel like the, that's one of my love languages, is to reach out through writing, through letters, through making cute cards. Um, yeah, that's a way that I find it's, I don't know, because then I'll spend time thinking about the people when I'm making them. Maybe it's a really introverted love form of expression. Um, but it always really makes me happy and then to get, you know, cause then they'll send you snail, snail mail back. So anyway, uh, friend dates in person, sad, uh, singing in the studio and in the car. I love singing. I also like to make up songs. I, right before pandemic, I was making up a lot of songs and singing a lot. I've sort of lost it. And now I'm like trying to like pull it back cause also singing and I don't know, using my body as an instrument instead of just thinking and like channeling it through my, my hand is really helpful. Um, and also toning and humming. Uh, these are also verbalizing ways to help get clogged energy and stuff out. So toning is when you um, make a sound and it like goes up or down like, ah. it's like doing a big sigh. I mean, just, I mean, just doing a sigh makes you feel good. <sighs> like making a sound and then humming mm, activates your vagus nerve which goes all the way through your body so i've been doing a thing where i've been combining tum toning and humming and it's sort of like a wailing cry it's like mm, so i've been doing that when doing like random chores around the house um which might look strange or sound strange but no one else is here to tell me that it looks strange um then making playlists and listening to the radio. I listen to online radio stations um, and it helps me feel connected in my studio. So I keep shouting out uh, John in the Morning, KEXP uh, in Seattle. He's been my, my favorite um, lately. Cause also I love making playlists cause music, being excited about music really makes me happy to be alive and excited and also um, there's like a little record player in my heart and in my head. And so if I put music on in there, it helps prevent, I just bit, it helps prevent certain just thoughts going on repeat on the record player. Cause sometimes I'm just like thinking, thinking, thinking a thought, thinking a thought, obsessing over something. So if I put music on there, 
that's a lot nicer. I'd much rather have that in my head. And uh, do I have one in my mix? Oh, I thought I grabbed one. Um, then let's see, contemplative dance. Dance has been a really helpful outlet. Um, uh, prayer and devotional rituals. These are like, um, you know, different sort of rituals I'll do like in the morning. I'll try to remember to like, okay, we're just gonna go outside, look at the sky and say a little prayer. Um, you know, waking up this morning, I smile. For I have 24 hours to live, I vow to live them deeply and look on all beings with eyes of compassion. That's one of the, the Dalai Lamas, the DL's favorite favorites. But you can insert rituals everywhere. Um, and I feel like, just the uh, contemplative chores? Oh, I guess that's in the next one. Uh, I'll talk about contemplative chores in a minute. Then I have a fingernail biting ritual because I'm a terrible nail biter and I can't stop it. I've been painting my nails to help me stop. And so what I'll do when I catch myself biting them is I'll just stop and kiss my nails as sort of a, I'm sorry, I love you, you're my tools, I shouldn't be eating you. Um, so I feel like, it's like, yeah, I can't just like quit cold turkey, but I'm in creating a ritual to at least pull the brakes when I notice. Uh, gender maintenance, um, which is personal, it's personal. Uh, exploring new places, which is kind of hard right now. Introvert social recovery time. I'm an introvert, which means that if I'm doing a large social event, which I'm not doing right now, but I need to take into account recovery time. Um, so yeah, as the aromatherapy and sense, I call them scent scene changes. Um, so I'm a big fan of lighting incense or spraying, um, like, ooh, I have some cloud of, some cloud of protection. This one's really nice. Uh, so sometimes at my desk, like when I'm like, okay, I got to get to work and I need like to get started and I'm sort of having trouble transitioning into a different state of mind, then I'll just like, okay, we're just going to spray a little of this. <sighs> Something about scent helps, helps me let go of whatever I'm stuck on and move on to something new. So I feel like that scent is always really helpful for a scene change or if I'm just need to... Yeah, if I'm in a bad mood, I'm trying to get into a good mood. And then, of course, phone dates with support system, Zoom dates, whatever, you know, uh, however way that you can keep in contact. So, and with, uh, oh, I wanted to mention that I also put up a Spotify. I've been putting up, finally putting up my playlist on Spotify. So I just put up one recently, which is like really fun. Um, in case you guys want to see it, I'm under Laura Lee Gulledge in Spotify. So let's see, yeah. emotional needs. These are the things that, I mean, I'll do them. This, these are the things I'll do when I feel like crabby or if I'm like, um, feel more melancholy. These are more the things that I'll like, okay, pick something from this list and do it. Cause I like to think about, these are the things that the emotional needs are more about like the heart. Um, and what, I don't know, the things that are sort of self soothing. And I guess, let's see. I'm gonna check on here if anyone has any questions. No questions yet. Okay, I'm just going to keep going. Okay, mental needs. Mental needs. Ooh. Okay, this is the last one with lots of stuff. Then your list get really short. <laughs> so the mental needs. These are the things that help calm and quiet your mind. So here I have a mind jar as as a good example. So this is like what your this is your mind when it's calm and relaxed. All right, it's all nice and clear. But then, this is like what your mind is like right now, where it's just uh, a swimming sea of chaotic thoughts swirling around. Um, and so when I feel like this, when I feel, which to me is like when I feel overwhelmed, because uh, I feel like the mental needs are about stimuli. Um, and I think about this a lot as a highly sensitive person, stimuli is a big deal. Cause if I'm under stimulated, then I'm like restless. And if I'm over stimulated, then I'm like overwhelmed. So it's like finding a good balance. So my mental needs are partially relaxing and partially stimulating. Uh, cause I don't know, it might seem kind of contradictory, but maybe we're just, we're humans. We're all contradictory. <laughs> so these are the things, let's see. All right. So I'm going to run through these real quick. Mental needs. I have weekly, regularly, daily, and yearly. 
and you can organize them however you want. Um, I generally start by making lists and then looking at the list to see and I'll mark like if there's any like patterns like I'll put like little shapes next to like oh these are daily or you know or maybe it's not a list like the emotional needs anyway. So weekly uh, at least one day off a week. I didn't used to do that when I was working on books and it makes a huge difference it turns out. And also making sure that I include flex time. Flex time is just where I don't schedule anything. So it leaves room for spontaneity or just relaxation. So whenever I like make a schedule for the week, I leave periods that are not planned because I tend to over plan things. Uh, and also weekly, I on every Sunday, I do what's called fictional assistant time. That's cocoa time. And actually next week, I'm gonna talk about making a fictional assistant. So. I'm gonna go all through that. So that'll be really fun to share some of my obsessively organizational helpful skills with you guys. Uh, but yeah, planning time to plan helps me mentally because then I don't have to, because sometimes it's hard when you like work for yourself or you're at ho working from home, you're always working and it's hard to create healthy boundaries for when you're living, when you're working, when you're doing different types of work. So yeah, so I put a lot of thought into how to structure my life for that. Then contemplative chores. Uh, my favorite being dishwashing. So whenever I wash dishes, it's like a, you know, if sometimes I'll, you know, listen to a podcast or something, but normally I try to use it as a meditation and focus only on the dishes that I'm washing, expressing gratitude for having dirty dishes, wishing blessings on who's going to use these dishes, that sort of thing. But even, but I have like different versions for different chores. So like, whenever I, so like yesterday I was vacuuming, so whenever I vacuum, I like I put on one of my playlists and it's almost like a little dance party. Um, but it's like the things that you have to do in your everyday life, I just think of like, how can I spin it? So it's not about adding more behaviors into your life, it's about changing how you're doing what you're already doing. Um, so yeah, I haven't come up with one for the cat litter yet, so I need to come up with something for that because oh, that's not, not fun. Then regularly personal art time, um, which I'm going to do next week, journaling, alone time, partnering with others, um, hugely helpful for my, for my mental health, and learning new things, because learning is fun, and you laugh when unexpected things happen, and so I find that, you know, maybe I'm just a, I love learning, but that helps me, like, mentally feel... I don't know. It's like gives my brain some like new stuff to chew on. Um, then daily, I meditate 10 minutes every night before bed. I've been doing that for like four years now and it really makes a difference. I use the insight timer, um, in case you're curious app wise, then knowing my stress warning signs, which I'm going to get to in a minute. Um, reading for fun. Then I, I control my social media intake, my news intake, and violent content. So those are my three trouble areas that I try to really be careful about, like what I'm putting in my head in the file cabinet. Um, so yeah, so I generally restrict the news in the morning and the social media. Oh, it's hard to not just dive down the rabbit hole, but yeah. Um, and yeah, being careful of what I'm watching because if I'm watching a lot of violent content that I don't like thinking with that. So I've been trying to do more like comedies. No screens after 9.30 p.m. Uh, and periods of silence. Because uh, silence, I feel like sometimes I'm always filling the air with music or stories and I need time of, yeah, just silence. And then yearly, I, um, these are like newer additions. So these aren't on my, the self-care plan on my website because my plan is always evolving. So these include making a, a one pager for when I visit the doctor. So. When I, so healthcare wise, I, when I have a physical issue, I have like a really strong emotional reaction and it's really hard for me to actually talk and communicate about what's going on. I don't know why. So like sometimes I'll be at a doctor's office and I like can't even like, I know I have a problem and I can't even like articulate it. I don't know what it is. Um, so to help myself, my, have all my documents in this folder with all these like empowering stickers to be like, because also I've seen so many doctors over the years and have not had insurance and like all these things. And so it's really, it's, it's hard. Um, so I'm trying to set myself up for success to make it easier for me to advocate for my needs 
when I do see a, a healthcare professional, because also whenever I'm seeing them, I'm not doing great. Um, so a little extra positive reinforcement, and I make, I have a one pager of my medical history. I don't want you all to be able to read it. <laughs> so I'm gonna just like hold it like here. Mm -hmm. But it's basically a diagram of your body and then writing in like your entire medical history. Um, and so I created this because I wanted to make it easier for like someone who's never met me before because if they only have like five minutes with me this helps me to sort of they can get like the blurry watercolor of like okay here's this person and their, their spots and their troubles um and so every year and i go into my physical i update this and also every year i update my self-care plan um i'm always adding to it as you can probably tell and i also have a i'll make a separate self-care plan if i'm doing a special event or something that I know is going to be really taxing. So actually I made a self-care plan for my book tour and I was so excited about actually implementing it. Um, and so, yeah. Um, so yeah, if I do like a comic con or a residency, I'll have special, I'll like create a, a self-care plan just for that event. So I think that's really important. And yeah. So unless anyone has any questions, let me check out here. No. Oh, I like the suggestion of a Japanese sand and rock garden for cat litter time. <laughs> Roy will come in there and mess it up. Okay, well, I'm going to move on to the next list in the self care plan. So, what I just went through is I just went through, let's see, physical needs, emotional needs, mental needs. So, now I'm going to go through the other side of the self care plan, which is less the the needs and more of the other stuff. So I'm gonna start off with uh, like supplements and food medicine. And just a disclaimer, I am not a licensed healthcare professional. I'm an artist. So um, I'm just sharing the things that have worked for me and the things that are on my plan, but I encourage you all to, before making any decisions about broad changes to your lifestyle or supplements or medications, like talk to your doctor, do your own research. Um, yeah, because also these are designed to meet my personal needs and yours are probably different. So I just want to make sure I put that out there because uh, I'm not like an herbalist or, or, or anything. So supplement wise, these would include vitamins, medications, food medicine and plant medicine uh, that are in your everyday life. And I feel like it's important to actually write these down in a plan because like, um, I don't know, because then they're just woven into your everyday life. And I think it's a really easy way to help yourself. So for me, let's see, the vitamins I take, you know, like multivitamin, calcium, I take vitamin D um, cause I generally spend a lot of time indoors with the work I do. Um, and also I'm a vegetarian, so I take fish oil because I know I'm, I need to get more like fatty acids and that sort of thing because also it helps with mood because um, yeah they've actually done studies with fish oil and it does help with mood and depression and things like that. Um, and I also take probiotics because I had an intestinal issue um, and I really do, th I, I don't know, it's hard to tell with vitamins and supplements and these changes in diet what things are actually helping you versus like because i don't know who knows but i really do think the probiotic has helped um me yeah i can't explain why but i just feel like it, it has um and let's see then food medicine let's see um food medicine i have prunes every day every day at lunch i have like a side of like prunes and carrots <laughs> um Carrots to like, you know, help the eyeballs because I have to be able to see because vision is my thing. And then the prunes are really good for the intestines and digestion. Um, and then I also, I always put wheat germ on my breakfast. I just like a spoonful of wheat germ because um, that has like folic acid and good stuff and like vitamin E and um, yeah. So those are like the simple like little things that I just like have every day, like food supplements. Then plant medicine wise, um, I am really into, I have Tulsi tea like every day. My favorite one is the turmeric ginger. This is like my jam. Um, so a lot of times if I'm 
like really down I'll just make a giant like thermos of tea so I have hot tea to sip on all day because um, that is really help an easy way to sort of be that kind to myself and then um, oh yeah, if you're not familiar with Tulsi it's also called holy basil uh, oh it's like full of antioxidants and good stuff and anti-inflammatory uh, and then of course ginger and turmeric it's also good for the immune system and let's see my friend Emma over at uh, up at Rail Yard Apothecary, uh, she actually prescribed a couple herbs for me when I asked her, like, hey, what helps ease depression, um, you know, plant-wise? And so she recommended lemon balm and linden. So I've been using those, um, I've been making teas with those a lot. Um, and they're both very tasty. And they even have a little tincture of the lemon balm. So sometimes I'll just put, like, a little of this, like, on my tongue. Mm -hmm. And just a little like burst of of healing goodness, and it tastes good. And uh, other also been uh, doing some motherboard lately, because uh, also because I've been dealing with some sort of I don't know postpartum book depression, um, and also like you know lady stuff. So um, yeah, and it also apparently helps with like reduced appetite. Because when I'm stressed, my appetite goes down. So so that's something I've, like, added just recently into my helpful, helpful plants medicines. And I'm always looking to, like, learn more. I feel like I'm very new with, with the herbalist game. But that's why go talk to a local herbalist. Basically go in and say, hey, I'm feeling X, Y, Z. What plants can help me with this? Because um, there's resources that we can use. And, you know, medications, you can go that route, too. I'm not an expert on that side. I'm more into the plant side. So, but yeah, ask for your, you know, talk to other people, do your research, try things out. And uh, if anybody has something that really works for them, please type it in and share it with us because I'm always looking to find more good healing medicine. And let's see, okay. Next, I'm going to move on to the support system in your self-care plan. Um, because not only food and medicine can help you, but people can help you. So your support system, I like to make mine as big as possible. <laughs> um, so this includes your world family, which is your, your chosen tribe. Um, then your biological family, so these are like my two families. That's what these tattoos on my ears mean that people always ask about. They represent my two tribes. Then of course your you know friends, lovers, partners, ancestors don't forget the ancestors especially right now um counselors mentors teachers historical mentors you might not uh, remember to include in there um these are the people that have inspired you and maybe you have not met in person but you can still pull wisdom and strength from so like jim henson is one of my number one historical mentors so i feel like sometimes i can like tap into his vibe um in the studio then magical helpers these include your creative genius, your personal, your fictional assistant, uh, maybe it's a, a guardian angel, maybe it's, I don't know, it could be a spirit animal. This is definitely a very abstract category. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about the magical helpers next week. Then animal companions, never to be underestimated. And I got mine right here. Oh, he's asleep. So I'm going to, oh no, oh no. Oh no, here's my animal companion. He was just asleep and he's very upset that I picked him up. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> oh no, I knew getting a buff baby was a bad idea when you wear a lot of black. Okay, so the support system, I uh, feel like, oops, buddy. Yeah, even if you are alone at home, it's nice to know that they have your back even if they're only there in spirit. Hey, don't chew on that. Hey, <laughs> buddy. Such a bad boy. Um, so for this list, it's I also like to think of your support system as the rungs on the ladder. So if you are feeling down in the well, these are the people to reach out to help you climb out. Um, and so, do do do. Cool. I think that's it. I want to say about the support system because I got to move on. So next, 
are the stress warning signs. This is like, we're now back down to our final list down here. Well, there's one more tiny list after this. So the stress warning signs are just, it's just a list of all the things that you noticed are like almost like symptoms uh, or the manifestations of stress in you just so you can be aware of it because I'm not always aware when I'm exhibiting them because they're not like registering consciously sometimes so actually making a list of them makes it easier for me to sort of logically see like oh I think I'm sad because I'm just like watching a lot of TV and eating cereal and crying it's like anyone from an outside point of view would be like yeah you're sad <laughs> But sometimes I need to, I invoke logic to help me manage my emotional state because I don't think straight um, down here. So for me, uh, oh, and also these are things that I'll often label as inconvenient, uh, you know, side effects of being a human. So actually elevating them to like, no, these are like symptoms of a problem. These are ways your body is trying to tell you that something is wrong and I should listen to it. Um, so it helps me pay attention. So mine include cry, 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 which ironically was not on my stress symptom uh, list before. I was like, oh, duh, how come that's not on there? <coughs> Melancholia, appetite loss, overindulgence, either with spending or with self-medicating, um, working late, racing thoughts, racing heart, feeling overwhelmed. That's my go-to word when things are not good. I'm like, I'm like, I don't um, it's like my toddler in me. Excessive nail and cuticle biting. Uh, uh, increased doubt, because um, they sort of multiply like triples. Pain in my neck, belly, or wrist. Hunched over posture. Um, yeah, the worse mood I'm in, the more I curl up into a ball. Um, excessive nostalgia or future tripping. Um, because the present can be hard, so sometimes I'll escape into another time. Uh, eye issues, so eye twitching and eye styes, or lack of eye contact, those are dead giveaways. Um, trouble communicating and trouble listening, those are really big ones um, that get in the, that actually can interfere with reaching out to people in the support system and can be, I don't know, detrimental so the so the trouble communicating is like a big one um increased insecurity plummeting confidence that goes along with the doubt um being defensive cagey or guarded because yeah a lot of times i feel like i'm saying help me but really i'm like bear, bear, like pushing people away um self-isolating huh. and um and my temperature generally drops and I get all sweaty, so I'm like hot, cold. So it's like red, but cold, like, ugh. But yeah, body is like freaking out. Um, so those are like my warning, the way my body expresses that stress is happening, you need to do something. So when I notice that they're like flaring up, I'll be like, oh, all my nails are bleeding because I've bitten them all down to like the quick. It's like, maybe I should do something to like invoke some self-compassion on myself. Or are you just hanging out? I don't know if you guys can see him behind those little star things. But he's just like hanging out out here. Okay. Okay, so, dun, dun, dun. Yeah, so these, my, res my symptoms might resonate with you if you're a highly sensitive person, but I'd be curious to see what other, how it manifests in other people besides myself. And so when you do see it flare up, reach out to someone in your support system and do something from your, your needs list. Okay, the last list that we're making is the shortest. This one I call the red flag rituals. These are the things that I do when I'm spinning and I cannot think straight and I'm just sort of stuck and not in a good place and I don't know what to do. So they're at the bottom of my self-care plan, like at the very, very bottom, like when in doubt, do these things. And so these also help me with like scene change because transitions are really what is the hardest for me. Transitioning from one state of mind to another or from one task to another, um, even one way of life to another. I find that those are the things that I have trouble going, like, leaping from one thing to the next. So my red flag rituals are sort of my go-to actions for, uh, I don't know, like I gotta 
like switch things now. So I'm going to, so for me, it's take a shower or a bath, put on clean clothes, obvious. Uh, but then making tea, which I love the ritual of making tea, um, and lighting incense to use smell to help, help, uh, sort of react, like, I don't know, stimulate my, my senses and s sort of, I feel like these are sort of like to trick me out of whatever pattern I'm in, trying to like break me out. Um, and I'll also do just a stair step breath. That's where it's basically just like doing deep, doing like a deep breath. Um, a stair step breath is like a three part breath where you breathe in like the bottom of the lungs, like down towards the bottom of your rib cage, like fill that part, then the, um, the, the middle part, and then like up by your collar bone. So like a one, two, three, and back and down. So like really filling your lungs with a lot of air, because we don't fill it with a lot of oxygen all the time, especially for stress and breathing really shallow. Um, so even if I'm just like driving, you know, between like errands or something, or just letting out like a, <sighs> just bringing in like, I don't know, even just a couple deep breaths is helpful. Um, so those are my red flag rituals and I'm actually working on making a, a what I'm calling like a red card. Um, Cause I feel like sometimes I have trouble communicating when I'm not doing well. And so I'm making sort of like a checklist. So when I'm not doing well, I can grab this sheet and it's like a checklist, like I'm feeling like anxious. Um, and then it's like, I need, and um, like have a list of like, I don't know, like what do I need? Like a hug, a sandwich, like, <laughs> so it make, cause sometimes it's hard for me to help other people help me. Uh, maybe I'm figuring out how to help myself right now so then I can help them help me. Um, so, so yeah, so that's something I'm working on. And if you really have, and if you really have trouble with communication or your one of your loved ones does, um, there are some really cool cards. There are these emotions and needs cards that basically have a list of like all the emotions and all the needs that um, a general human has. And so you can like print them off and have them as a resource. So if someone doesn't know how to articulate what's going on or they don't know how to articulate what they need, it's like a helpful resource. Um, it's from the center for, from nonviolent communication. So I think maybe Larkin can share that link and do, do, do. Yeah. And if you're not sure what your red flag rituals are, just look at your self care plan and pull out some of like the simple ones that are like go to's. Um, okay. I'm gonna see if anyone has, are there more comments in there? Rory. Judge the system. Cool, cool. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Well, I'm going to go on to how to implement your self care plan in your real life. Real life. Because real life is complicated. Um, and it's easy to talk about doing all these great, helpful things for ourselves. Um, but yeah, how do you actually run through it? Oh. I forgot to mention rows earlier when I was talking about the plants, putting rows and everything. Okay. So implementing it into your daily life. I find, let's see, I have like five things. I made a lot of signs this week because I was determined the camera would not be flipped. Um, okay. Number one is to customize it. Customize your self-care plan for you personally. Because I've just walked through the one that I've developed for myself. It's not one size fits all. Um, so if you have a disability or a diagnosis you need to take into special consideration, you know, that's really important. Or maybe yours is super simple. Maybe it's a top 10 list because it, mine is like too complicated. Um, maybe it's only three things on your self-care plan. Maybe you need to add a whole new category. Like I have physical, emotional, and mental needs, but maybe you need like a spiritual needs category in addition. Or maybe you need to add um, like safe places. Like where do I feel safe? Like where can I go to? Maybe that's something that's important to add to your self-care plan. Uh, maybe you're a caregiver and you need to add a section that's about 
that's including the needs of who you're caregiving for and think about how to include them into your self-care plan and how to make that time more restorative for both of you. Um, or maybe you need to, uh, I don't know, like make one for your cat. No, he doesn't need one. He just needs more savory salmon. Um, <laughs> so yeah, number one, personalize it according to you. Um, and yeah, visually it can look like anything. Maybe it's a bouquet of flowers. Maybe it's a Venn diagram. Um, I encourage you to, yeah, just make it your way. The next on my list is to post it because along with accountability, post your self care plan. Mine's in my studio, but put it someplace where you can see it. Um, or maybe it's something that's like folded and in your wallet. I don't know, just some way that it fits into your life and that you actually can be reminded of it. And of course, uh, sharing it with others because telling other people about our needs, it helps them hold us accountable too, um, but also helps them help us. So if they know like, oh, that's like a warning sign, like she's not good, she needs some cheese, get some cheese really fast. Um, <laughs> and it can make it much more like, I don't know, less like a serious, like, separate from life sort of thing. It makes it more, I don't know, fun and something that you can talk about out loud and not feel like, oh, it's bad that I need these things. This is something to be ashamed of. It's like, no, let's just be open about it. Because also the more you talk about what you need, the more other people will talk about what they need. And then we're all talking about what we all collectively need to thrive together. And that's helpful. Um, and do, do, do. Oh yeah, because like, it, one reason I was excited to do my self-care plan at, at like Comic Cons on book tour was because when I've done shows and I'm practicing self-care practices, like I'm going to go do a dance party for five minutes before the show opens because I have a lot of like anxious energy I need to get out. Um, and then other people are like, what are you doing going over there dancing? Um, like, well, this is what I need and I'm modeling the sort of culture that I need at Comic-Con because it's overstimulating and like having to plant at my table because you're under the fluorescent lighting all day and it's really weird and um, making sure that I have like that thermos of hot tea because you talk all day and it's always freezing in there and so to even just talking to the other people around me about like like oh this is what I'm doing to take care of myself they're like really like you brought your own food you didn't have to go buy this like crappy expensive like convention food was like no you don't have to do that and it's like oh so this is how we change culture is that if you're modeling how the stuff that you need to do to thrive that that's how you change the world around you um i used to feel really sort of embarrassed to talk about like these are the things i need sorry to be such an uh, annoying you know like needy artist but then realize that then other people would open up about what they need and we can help each other. And it's all just vulnerable fun. And Rory's just like running around in here because he's bothered I'm not paying attention. <laughs> so it's, I wish you guys could see. Um, and of course, living it, which includes like modeling it. Sometimes you have to stand up for things and sometimes it's hard to be like, hey, I know, you know, we're all supposed to be doing a thing, but I need to go off to the side just some time by myself, with, which now I'm saying this example, I realize it's not applicable to our current situation. Uh, but sometimes you have to stand up for, for your needs and it might be inconvenient for other people, but I don't know if you explain your, why you need it and what's going on. Rory, get down from, oh, he's being a bad boy. He's a bad boy. <laughs> okay, and let's see, let it, to live it and let it evolve so take things off your self-care plan add things to it create new categories just if you have it posted up like i just go over and like edit stuff like all the time um so it can evolve with you and i guess i do want to mention the number the two big obstacles um that i know that i had with a self-care plan which is time and money the two big obstacles for everything um and I feel like that, yes, I know I'm like a privileged person in the developed world. And so it's easy for me to like have 10 minutes before bed to do meditation and certain things. That cat, he's totally distracting me. He's now climbing up the window. Um, Roy, stop it. <laughs> but I feel like, well, time-wise, a lot of these actions are not about adding behaviors. They're more about changing how you do it. 
Um, but also making a list of the things that are restorative for me, it makes me question like doing other, some other things. Um, it's like, well, you know, binge watching a series like all day, that's definitely like kind of relaxing, but I can't do it like all the time because it's not actually restorative, restorative for, for me. Um, but I feel like that I'll think about like, if you think if time is an issue, then make a, an Artner Dare that actually Lark and I did was called Time Chart, where we charted our time and then drew it again, but with how we wanted to be spending our time. So thinking about, well, what could I take time away from to devote towards a new self-care practice? So I feel like now is a great opportunity to sort of think about how you're using your time because we're home. So, you know, so let's, for example, you don't have your daily commute now. So that gives you extra time, which maybe that time is now being used to troubleshoot and put out fires and deal with the situation right now. But maybe that's an extra like 45 minutes that you can use for some self-care practices. Um, so I think a lot of it is, yeah, <laughs> changing how you're doing things like dishes, um, then just like adding more things to do. Cause I don't want this to be stressful. Like, oh, now I got to do all these new things. It's like, well, no, you don't have to do all of them. Um, it's just start with like a few. And then with the money thing, a lot of these things do not cost money. Some of them do. Some of them are investment. Some of them I've slowly built in over like Christmases, you know, like I feel like whenever people like want to give a present, I always recommend something that is something I want for my self care plan. Like I need a meditation cushion. I need a stockpile of tea. Um, so those are normally how I'm, when it comes to like buying new things, thinking about if it's part, if, is this restorative is definitely something that has changed how I think about how I spend my money. Um, so I know part of it is there's definitely an element of privilege with self care, like even having the time to take care of yourself. Um, but this cat, well, <laughs> And so I guess I just think about like, well, I'm gonna take care of myself so I can do better, make, continue to make stories and to continue to be an educator and continue to help the way I can because I can't solve all the problems in the world, little old me. Um, and so yeah, and if there's other people in your life who they need help with their uh, self-care, please help them. Um, especially if you have friends who are like in caregiving situations, my heart's going to you all very particularly. Okay, I think I'm about, am I done? Oh, I'm over time. Um, okay, I'm gonna close with, dun dun dun, that I art or dare you all to make a self-care plan of your own and to slather on the self-care. Let's see, final things I wanna mention that I have a mini comic about self-care. Um, it's part of, I have a little bundle on my website store of mini comics and stickers. So if you want this little, it's just a little baby version of sort of what I talked about um, today for making your own self-care plan. Um, but yeah, so I have like a bundle of like mini comics on my website. If that is up your alley or you feel like giving it to someone that you care, or having me mail it to someone that you care about. And let's see, oh, I'm wearing my magical shoes this week. Can I see? This is my magical shoes. They're my little witchy boots this week. And next week, I'm doing the video is about making magical studio helpers. So these are how to make your fictional assistant and put them to work, but also how to uh, empower your creative genius as a collaborator in the studio, because that's the other person I talk to who's invisible in my studio. Um, but, you know, tapping into some other magical ways of thinking to use your imagination to, I don't know, help you be more productive and focused. And then the next one will be making mini comics. This one is definitely going to, like, invite all the kids to this one because we're going to be making a comic together. And I'm going to show you guys how to make your own mini comic, which, or zine, uh, like this little guy, at home. And then the last event of this virtual book tour is going to be on sketchbook dare drawing. So those are going to be activities from sketchbook dares. So that's another one really good for young artists, um, really all artists. And these are all going to be here on my Facebook page. Dun, 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 dun. And eventually I'm going to get all these videos in a single playlist on YouTube. So it'll be really easy to share. And dun, dun, dun. 
I guess I would like to say, give a little round of applause for you guys for tuning into this video. Yay! And my artner Lauren Larkin, who's chiming in with links and support. Oops. <laughs> I'm smart. Um, <laughs> and I'd like to also just say a really big thank you to all you guys for tuning in and helping make this book tour something to be happy about instead of just being really sad about having to cancel everything. I feel like it's not what I envisioned it was going to be, but I'm having, I'm having fun with it and learning a lot. And I hope that you guys are enjoying, enjoying the journey as well. And if you enjoyed it, please consider sharing. And I guess I, until next week, I hope you guys have a, um, a healthy and inspired rest of your day. May you be well, may you be weird. And I love you all. And mwah! Okay, wait, I'll grab Rory. Rory! Oh, he ran off. Okay, never mind. Bye, everybody! <laughs>